ne kuanta longva ne kutsaku keng mana yan hopi matsiwa ne pari talongva yan pahan matsiwa ne patki wongwa pe ka e wongwa ne tsitsomo vit anko hello my name is Patty Talohungva, and my Hopi name is White Spider Girl. I come from the village of Sitsomovi on First Mesa in northeastern Arizona, and I am Corn Clan, and also Water Clan. I just spoke to you in an American Indian language. It is my language, and it's called Hopi. There are more than 500 federally recognized tribes in our country, and each has its own distinct language, and they are as different as English is to French. So, as Native Americans, we have our own distinct language, culture, religion, and also governments. And yet, still, I have people who come up to me and ask me, do you speak Indian? No, I speak Hopi. So, I rep um, this represents the mindset of European Americans who came to this country and just couldn't get over this idea that so many distinct tribal people lived here, again, all with their own language and culture and such. And that's the problem, the misrepresentation and misunderstanding of American Indians in our country. We have been trying to educate European Americans for more than 500 years. It still continues to this day. I'm here to talk about Indian 101, the basics, because that's where the conversation starts for most of us, right? Most people get the basics wrong. Let's start with this term Indian, okay? We all know who we, can ha we have to thank for that misnomer. And for the record, American Indians, Native Americans, Alaska Natives, all of those terms are equally wrong. We identify as our own tribe. I'm Hopi. My friend identifies as Chickasaw. My other friend identifies as Akuma, Grovant, and Clinkett, and so on. But I get that it's hard to remember 500 plus federally recognized tribes. So we don't expect you to. So it's OK to call us American Indians, Alaska Natives, Native Americans, or just simply Indians. But please ask us how we like to be identified. I mentioned, again, there are more than 500 federally recognized tribes in our country. And that means the US government has given these tribes the AOK -okay to be Indian. They have proven their Indianness, and they are now federally recognized. That translates into federal money, right? Spelled out in our treaties, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But let me add, there are hundreds of tribes in our country who are either state recognized or who are going through the federal recognition process. Until then, they do not have access to federal funds. So this is a good time to tell you that American Indians are the most regulated people in our country, right? Um, and we still don't have a paid holiday in our honor. And you know what? Thanksgiving does not count. OK. Some of us have cards that show that we are enrolled as a tribal member. Um, we do have dual citizenship. But please don't ask me, what is your nationality? I'm American. I think when people are asking me that, what they're really trying to say is, what is your ethnicity? We are an intriguing bunch. Um, <clears throat> on the positive side, people see us as stoic and mystical. And on the negative side, people see us as drunk and ignorant. We have these misconceptions in our history and in our lives today because American Indian history is not taught in any depth in our schools, in our public school system. Federal Indian law is not even mentioned. And so people do not understand this federal to federal relationship American Indian tribes have with the US government. And in my humble opinion, we graduate whole classes of ignorant journalists, politicians, and voters because they don't understand that, re that, that uh, relationship between the tribes and the federal government. Here's a brief history. When uh, the Europeans first came to this country, they went to war with the tribes over land. But in that time, they also signed treaties with the tribes because they recognized the tribes as sovereign nations. When this country was created, the US Constitution was created. Tribes were specifically mentioned in the US Constitution. It is in section one, or yes, Article 1, Section 8 of the US Constitution. And in fact, we are the only people specifically mentioned in the US Constitution. We have that federal to federal relationship. Still, our government was trying to kill us off, right? All in the name of westward expansion. So um, some tribes, uh, well, back up a little bit here. 
we were in the War Department when, we, when it was first created, and then eventually we became um, parts, part of the Interior Department. And so like our national forests, we are national treasures as Indian people. Okay, so back to, <laughs> yes, applaud your national treasureness. So back to our treaties, okay, and the idea of uh, funding, right? Um, we have this idea, or non-Indians have this idea, that we get free money from the government, that we don't pay taxes, and that our kids are going to get a free college education. And that is so far from the truth. So what is the idea about federal money? Well, through the treaties, the tribes do get money, right? And it's for things like infrastructure, education, and um, housing and health and such. But you know what? It's never enough. It's not enough because the allocations are not made in any significant uh, way to fully fund these kinds of programs. Let me sidestep into the world of Indian gaming, okay? Because that's another misconception Native Americans have. You know, we all have casinos. Actually, there are only 28 states in the country that have Indian casinos. And only a fraction of them are actually making any kind of decent money, a lot of money, right? So remember I talked to you about being the most regulated people in the country? Well, Indian gaming is a highly regulated business. And in fact, the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act even spells out how tribes can spend their money they make from the casinos. And they also state that the tribes must share a portion of their profits with the state. Think about that for a minute. So we are nations within a nation, and we are in our homelands, but displaced. In many cases, in term, uh, in, for so-called progress, right? When the US government couldn't kill us off, they decided to Americanize us, to make us as white as possible. They took our children, kidnapped them, and put them into government boarding schools where they made them, tried to make them as white as possible. Cut the hair, change the clothes, and only speak English. So today, we have generations who were ripped from their culture, who didn't fit in there, and when they returned home after schooling was over, they didn't fit into their own tribal communities. And yet, because of the color of their skin, they weren't accepted into mainstream society. So we have issues. Among them, alcohol, OK? Most tribes don't have a fermented drink. So it was easy to become addicted to alcohol. And sadly, many did, and still do today. Here are some sobering statistics in Indian country. Our life expectancy is 73 to 77 years of age, and that is four years less than the national average. We suffer from violent crime at a higher rate than any other group of people in the country. We have the highest rate of type 2 diabetes. Our diet has changed considerably since European contact. Consider the fact that before Europeans arrived, we did not have beef. We did not drink dairy or eat dairy products. We didn't have wheat and most refined sugars. We had natural sugars. Our diet has changed tremendously. Our unemployment rate is at 70% on reservations, where 23% of the population live in poverty. Youth suicide is at an epidemic rate here in Indian country, and yet most people don't even know that. Youth 15 to 24 years old are taking their lives at, at um, four times the rate of the national average. In some tribes, that rate goes up to 10 times. And if you're in Alaska, you may as well double that number. That's how bad the suicide rate is among our youth. To muddy the waters even more, prominent images that dehumanize American Indians cause our children to suffer, whether they realize it or their parents realize it or not. Caricatures as Indian people, it does not help who we are. Take a look at this image here. I don't say the R word. Most Americans don't even know where it came from. But here's a picture of a bounty hunter with the scalps he's collected and money he will get for those scalps. Remember, westward expansion at its finest. I don't want to leave you with all doom and gloom, OK? One of the best things Indian people have going for them is our sense of humor. We see humor everywhere even when it hurts. So in closing, I want you to know that yes, we can make it rain. Yes, we speak to the animals and the plants. 
no, we will not give you an Indian name. And yes, when I go to a restaurant, I always have a reservation. <laughs> I hope I've stirred your curiosity a little bit so that you go out and learn more about Hopis, about Akamas, about Chickasaws and Clinkets, and all of those other people who are mistakenly known as Indians. I want to say Esquili, that means gracias. Thank you for listening, and thank you for watching.